Witching Hour has headline content warnings for death and dying, horror themes, mental health and trauma, sound effects, sociopolitical themes, violence, swearing, blasphemy, innuendo, second-person perspective, and fourth wall breaking. Detailed content warnings are available behind a spoiler tag on the website. Pseudopod, the sound of horror! Welcome back to Pseudopod. I'm your host, Alistair Stewart. We are so excited to bring you a very special episode, a rooftop extravaganza to celebrate the witching hour. <laughs> That's right. As you know, in every dimension there is a pseudopod, and in every pseudopod there is an Alistair. Tonight, the witching hour is our one window to bring all the pseudopod towers together and present to you the perfect story. We've got a wonderful night plan, with live reporting and prizes. And with all the Alistairs aboard, I will bring you the perfect story. And I promise you, it's true. Every Alistair's voice, every pseudopod tower, transmitting as one... Al? Al? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Marty. What's going on? Oh, uh, we've got a problem with all the other pseudopod towers extruding into our world. We're getting extra signals from those worlds too. Yeah, that's the plan. The other towers will make our signals strong enough to carry the perfect story. Right, but the signal was getting disrupted. I had to move some things around and that might have impacted some vital systems. What do you mean exactly? You know that thing that should never happen? It happened. It escaped. I think so, but I can get it back. Good. Because what does the show have to be, Marty? Friendly and familiar. Friendly and familiar. Marty, I'm looking at a little red light that says we're broadcasting. Which channel are you using to tell me this? Uh, I... oh, no. Yes, we're, we're live. We sure are! Give it up for Marty, everyone! What a stellar engineer. None of this would be possible without him. Let's check in with our man on the street to see what kind of weather we can expect for the rooftop party. Alistair? Thanks, Alistair. Clear blue skies shifting to an uncanny green colour. And I'm here on the scene to report as all our instruments are down. Expected bit of weather as gloom gathers at the horizon, especially a kind of gelatinous viscous mist at the base of the towers as they seep into our reality. The towers seem to be every shape and size, and families out for a picnic might notice that the towers are slowly rotating and pitching up and down like carnival horses covered in corrosive ichor and carpal suckers. The stench is truly palpable, as though a single lightning strike boiled thousands of pounds of krill and washed them ashore to bake in their own rot. And based on the buzzing in my feelings, we're in for a lot more lightning. Rain expected with a strong chance of... uh, Are those... teeth? Yes, yes, those are teeth. The clouds around the towers have teeth. Oop, here comes a bird. I wonder if... Oh. The bird just got thwomped. Oh, here come more birds. The birds are being sucked into the clouds between the towers. There are now more clouds. Commuters may wish to top off their wiper fluid and bring out the snow brushes a little early to clear windshields of mangled bird parts. Pack heavy boots and save your dress shoes for once you're inside the office. Oh, an update. It appears that the towers have completely obscured the horizon. This is going to make for a very interesting sunset and may affect your commute. Back to you, Alistair. Thanks, Al. Always a breath of fresh air. Our next story is a very special one. Let's check in with our friends at the hot new cafe and bar, The Scottish Place. Welcome to the Scottish place, where trouble and coffee are brewing and your hands will never come clean. I'm Alistair, and I'll be emceeing this fine collection of up-and-coming poets. Up next is our Witching Hour headliner, Shirley J, and her backup band, The Lotto Winners. So sit back, open your ears, and relax your third eye. Yo, yo, yo. 
Yonder by K. Blackwood I spy with my little eye something beginning with Y. I'll give you a clue. It moves with fluid grace, moving down, then up, unravelling a thread behind it, bulbous in its form. Spun with method and the instinct of far less years than I. And yet it spins in the wind. Buffeted by forces it cannot see. And nature beyond its control. Though you probably cannot see it. Even though you definitely have the vantage. Do you have eyes out there while you stand guard on me? On the kid whirling with their yo-yo, casting wild and free? Though perhaps I should have chosen yonder, staring out the window at the places I cannot go, forced to consider an overlooked view, I must concentrate to see and take stock of what might be. I can survey my domain, limited as it is, and confidently say, B is for a well-read book, P is for some paper, K is for the knitted blanket, a childhood wrap in patchwork, stitched with cares and love. W is for the wisdom of my peers, and T is for the thought that my colleagues wouldn't be here. I spy. Pseudopod, the sound of horror. Did you hear that? Something went wrong with our signal right when our guest star went up. Yes, I heard it. Not to worry, I'll, I'll have Alex check it out. Meanwhile, Pseudopod is extruded into this universe on a frequency of 437 megahertz, which is the frequency the universe broadcasts on. It's the carrier wave for reality, and it's all supported by you. Now that everything is running smoothly, let's have a talk about how to support us. Through human bone. <clears throat> let me let me fast forward through that bit. We are now paying all our staff, all of them loyal, all of them bonded. Yep, bonded. And that's because of you. The tithe we take from your ears every time you listen. The snatches of skin and blood and time. Thank you for that. Without you, these unsung heroes of the industry wouldn't be sung. With you, their dread cacophony shall shatter the walls of heaven itself. Now remember to like, share, subscribe, and donate. To share the love, simply forward this to someone you know. They'll have seven days, just like we did, just like you do. Good luck, and remember, for every person you forward this on to, you get another seven days, and so do we. Also, you gain access to our archive, and the Voice Vault is ready to receive you. We need your address. Not if you already donated. We already know where you live. You're already with us here in the dark. No, you, the ones who take but do not give, the ones who think they are alone and have not yet discovered nothing could be further from the truth. You. We need your addresses. Because th then we can we can, can visit, visit and show you what you're missing. Show you what is, what is, what is waiting for you. Join the family. Or the family will join you. If you haven't already given and have seen no sign of a pseudopod tower in your neighbourhood, you could always help us out by buying a pseudopod tiki mug. These handcrafted pieces bear a striking resemblance to the tower itself, and there's no better way to show all your friends that you're part of our family. They are eager to extend our reach and very excited to meet you. Marty, did your walkie-talkie break or something? Has it been recaptured yet? Come in. Stop talking. It'll hear you. Marty, you okay? Oh, great. Why is this not working?
Thanks, mate. Driver out, Robbie. Got you, bruv. There you are. All right, hop in. Good to see ya. Close the door and we'll teach you all we know, eh? Now, on the mainland here, you got your AA and your tow trucks, which is all well and good. But it makes you lazy. Makes you lazy. Now, being an island mechanic, that makes you crafty. Doesn't it, Georgie? Yeah, and that's why you need a Torrance's car kit. A Torrance's car kit. Essential items for island mechanics, we call it. All right, mate, first stop. On St Kilda, there's no petrol station. Can't just rock up to the BP for a saucy roll. It's whatever you got in your garage, innit? And if you're caught out... Good luck. Enjoy hiking in the rain. One time, Robbie ended up swimming. She's pretty cold. In December. Oh, I wasn't watching the tides. Never again. So, your first item. Jerry can, and more importantly, a hose. You never know when you're going to need a pinch of top up. Oh, don't be like that. We never take a full tank. Share and share alike, eh? Right, so, it goes into the tank and suck to begin the transfer. <laughs> Try not to swallow any. Uh, emergency plan B? Yep, item two in your Torrance car kit a coat hanger. It's got to be an old wire twisty one. Plastic or wood is no good, even if it keeps your shirts pressed. All right, bend it into a J shape, yeah, a little flatten at the bottom. Perfect, now slide in between the window and the door. <laughs> nah, I've been doing it since I was four. You can do it. There's a pin. Pull it up. Yeah, you're doing great, mate. Your first break-in. Adorable. So you want a tourist car, ideally, covered in flags and stickers with a foreign plate, but something that says, oh, I'm outdoorsy. Yikes. Oh, you can tell by the smell. What is that? I want to say patchouli and hiking boots. I hate that you can do that. Now, in a really sticky situation, find a hiker and grab the camping stove. The fuel in that will get you to the next place. Got one. Good spot. On we go. Now, it's not just about maintenance. It's about what to do when you hit trouble. It's not that we mind a bit of trouble. Now, most mechanics will tell you to have jumper cables, but that's... Boring. Dull and utterly useless. Why would you recharge a battery when you could just grab one that's already charged? Nah, don't worry. We'll do swapsies. It'll just be like Indigo and Kayleg. Kaylee? Is that, is that Kaylee? Ugh, for the love of Dubrack, it'll just be like they ran the radio a touch too long. Oof. Bad car care here. See how the battery looks all fuzzy? Corrosion. Canny, your favourite non-sponsored soft drink will get that right off. I got it. Obviously, every mechanic needs a spanner. Yeah, no, it needs a clean. Blood? Nah, it's bolognese sauce. Bad dinner party at Angelique's. He doesn't like to talk about it. How was I to know fix my pipes was some kind of euphemism? Right, swap ya. Everyone knows that? Disgusting. And a brand new clean battery for the van. While you put that in, let me give you another tip. See these? Spark plugs. That's what you need if the engine starts knocking. If the boot starts knocking, you can use a spanner again, eh? <laughs> Just a little island humour. We'd never use a spanner for that. A good blanket does it quieter and cleaner. But if you were in a bind and needed to get in and out quick, one of these bad boys will smash through a window in a minute. Show them, Robbie. OK. Come on, mate. Huh? Together. <gasps> Don't be a drama queen. Now, the next item is the blanket. Well, just some rags if you have them. Here you go. I wasn't kidding about having a blanket. You're doing great. Don't panic. Just pop that over the edge so you don't cut yourself, and you can reach the inside handle and pop it open. There, see? Easy. Hey, hey. Don't cry. You didn't cut yourself, did you? Breathe, mate. Breathe. What do you need a phone for? There's no need to call the fuzz, mate. It's just a window. I thought you wanted to become an island mechanic. You said you wanted to know everything. This is emergency repair, mate. Nothing personal. Well, looks like somebody wants in-house experience. Now get the shovel. Now a good shovel is an important kit item. Gets you out of mud, snow, and every once in a while, another jam. Okay, in we go. <clears throat> <sighs> 
Excuse me. Right, the final kit piece. Touch either side to the relay on the starter motor. Purple to the red wire. She'll be running in just a minute. Now bring that knife back when you're done, eh? Yeah, sorry, mate, but I'm not sure you're cut out to be a St. Kilda mechanic. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have kept the spark plug. She's back. Let's go, bruv. Perfect. Now, let's turn off that dictaphone, eh, mate? We, uh, we don't need to record the next bit. <laughs> And we return to the Witching Hour extravaganza, live from Pseudopod with only minutes to the perfect story. This story is an amalgam of all the stories Pseudopod has collected over the last few years. You know, I've worked hard curating the very best of the best, and this journey has really taught me a lot about the power of storytelling. What the heck was that? This shouldn't be happening. Do I need to defrost another engineer? No, I don't want to reroute power when we're this close to the hour. Let me see if I can... The sun's down, the day is over. The humdrum daily grind of daily life is slowed to a stop. Time to pour yourself a drink, get into something a little more comfortable, and let yourself get carried away by me, DJ JD. Your guide into that better place here on KRPY. Let your hair down, light some candles, and settle in. You've got me all night, right up to the witching hour. So what say we don't raise a little hell together? Looks like we already got a board full of callers ready to be so good at being bad. Let's start with line nine. Now, nah. make that six. Line nine is next. You're on, caller. Tell me, and tell me slow. What is it you've got yourself up to on this fine, fine night? <sighs> Sounds like someone's having a good time already. As much as I'm enjoying the performance call, our conversations are a two-way street. It's a you-do-me-I-do-you sort of thing. How about you tell me a little about what's got you breathing so heavy? <laughs> Well, as much as I enjoy hearing one of our listeners enjoying themselves, there's plenty of people waiting for their own turn. How about we take a little break, slow things down with some sultry sounds, while I have a little word with our producer about call screening. Don't you worry, DJ JD ain't going away, so you sit tight. Looks like it's going to be one of those kind of nights. Having a little technical issue with the board, so as much as I'd like to get you all in the mood with some music, I guess I'll just have to do that all on my lonesome. What the? <clears throat> I mean, looks like the higher powers decided to make things sexier in the studio by turning the lights off. That's all right. I know where all the buttons are. I'm just going to let my fingers do the walking as we get another caller on the line. Back to line nine it is. Well, 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 looks like our friend is back. Um, JD, our phone lines are down right now. I'm not sure what you're hearing, but it isn't from the phones. Katie? Katie! I think you can interrupt my show, do you? Bye bye, Mr. DJ. Alex, reroute his callers. There we go. 
Pseudopod towers are being sighted all over the Earth, from megaliths bursting from volcanoes to tiny satellite transmitters about the size of a tiki mug. Have you seen one in your neighbourhood? Let's take some calls and hear all about it. Welcome to Pseudopod Caller, you're on the air. Witchy <laughs> Caller, welcome to Pseudopod. You're on the air. Hello? Oh my gosh, I got through. Harry, we got through! Am I calling number 1313? Is the sky green? It's green. It's green. Harry, we won! I've wanted a mug for so long. I've been a huge fan of the show. They're so hard to get. Thank you, Hal. No, 1313. Thank you for all your support. Do I need to do anything? Can I give you my address? (laughs) Oh, there's no need for that. It'll find you soon enough. Harry, we... Oh, God. Run! (laughs) Should we take another? Hello, caller three. Happy witching hour. Al, we've got a huge problem. There are other pseudopod towers popping up all over the... Wait, who's this? This is Alistair Stewart with Pseudopod, wishing you a very happy witching hour. What? No, you aren't. Where's Alistair? What did you do with him? Whoops. Looks like the escape pod lost signal. Great mileage. Terrible reception. Hello, welcome to Pseudopod. Hello, Alistair. You. What did you do with Marty? Your familiar sends his regards. He no longer has signal. This can't be happening. I'm taking it all back. Sound familiar? Tick tock. Cut to commercial. So if you're enjoying this episode or just want to see what happens next, please donate. Money, time, blood plasma, unwanted relatives. We have massive engines and all is fuel. So donations to all is fuel at escapeartist.net. Mount Absalom, a community, a heritage, a home, the green jewel in the majestic crown of Ohio. For 200 years, Mount Absalom has been a place to play. N32. Bingo! A place to learn. For in thy green and growing arms, we have everything we need. All right. Now let's get out our math homework. A place to work. Here at the Celery Bottling Works, we produce over 2,000 bottles of celery soda every day. A place to raise a family. It's a girl. It's a place of history. And here we have the barrel of whiskey that Confederate soldiers stole from Mount Absalom patriot Amelia Pleasance during Morgan's raid. And of course, a place of celery. 201st Celery Festival, I dub thee Open! (laughs) Mount Absalom is the perfect place for making memories. 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 Make your memories with us. Make your memories here. With Absalom. Paid for by the Delphi Quarter of Mount Absalom and Celeric Bottling Works. Refreshing Celeric Soda and Diet Celeric Soda. What is it, Alex? Is your implant going off again? No. Southern shows. They're getting dragged across from the towers. Can we drown them out? The perfect story won't work without the perfect signal. Yeah. Just give me a minute. Let me let me calibrate. Angle the signal to converge on South Carolina. Make sure there's enough tiki mugs in the area to hold it down. The little things are like interdimensional tent pegs. I can't believe they're actually working. Ah, oh, shit, that's gonna draw power away from Ibiza. Pseudopod Tower in Ibiza was supposed to anchor this morning. Uh, no, she scheduled the anchor point in New Orleans for this morning. No, it had the doof doof music. What's that called? Uh, drum and bass? Nah, the other one, like the name of a tool. Drill? Nah, close though, it's more doof doof doof. EDM, it's EDM, for the love of God, now step away from the console. Jesus, what? Holy shit, Al, you look like hell. 
I look like hell because I have been in a box for years. Awake to feel her cut my words from me and make them hers and the only thing, the only thing that got me through is knowing that if you touch that console again, Alex, that implant will be the least invasive thing that has ever happened to you. Oh, you have to calm down. We talk to you. We talk to you every week. <laughs> you talk to a shitty copy of my voice. Don't pretend you didn't know. You helped her. What are you talking about? We didn't know. Shut up, Sean. Remember when she showed up 15 years ago asking for help? Her version of Pseudopod Pod faded. In her dimension, the show failed. When she came asking for advice, I gave it. And then she stopped asking. And when I said no, she locked me up and she cut my words away. When and you said no, huh? She took my words. Ben's words, every story we've ever ran, and squeezed it, grind it, and racked it until it blistered enough to graft them all together. And she calls that perfect. The perfect story. She knows what she's doing now. It's all been planned. As soon as the hour winds down, the perfect story will be on air. Everywhere. The perfect story isn't a story, you idiots. It's a wake-up call for an elder god. What god? I'm just here to put on a podcast. We're here to tell stories. Why is the show called Pseudopod, Sean? Why is the show always called Pseudopod? Because a whale scientist got the cephalopod first. Wrong! It's called Pseudopod because they're all connected to a massive... thing. Entity. Call, call it a god. There is a tentacle in every world. We may have built this one up, but we didn't start this. We didn't make this. We just found it. Someone, somewhere, always, just finds it, and when they do, it feeds on the horror we instill. It feeds, it grabs, it takes to a central moor. Go Team Tentacle. You found it, and she found it, and Alistair always finds it. But you kept it a secret. You say we, you, kept the secret of the power at the core of all this. You kept that from the rest of the team. No, I didn't. I Was there a meeting? An announcement? Do you ever consider talking to us for telling her no? She put me in a box, stole my voice, warped every single story we've ever collected. Have you been listening to her broadcast? How can you possibly be on her side? For us to be a team, we have to trust each other, and we have to have each other's backs. We have to speak with one unified voice, and you kept this gigantic secret to yourself. She reached out to us for help, and you answered for us. That's not the same. You know it isn't. Sean, are you hearing this? I don't know what to think, man. She's got us scheduled out through the end of the universe. We've got resources to make the show we've always dreamed of. Everyone is buying tiki mugs. How do you know what her plan is? Like you said, you've been in this booth the whole time. Because of what she made me do. Because of the words and the bloodletting and... <sighs> we have to stop her. We have to disrupt the signal, throw her off. This hour, the witching hour, this is her one shot. She's been waiting to bring all the towers through to our world, and now is her only chance. Guys, please. It's too late. Even if the other signals try to break through, they won't succeed. The show will continue as planned. Sean? But we can do so much good now. We have time enough at last. You didn't understand. You don't understand what she did for us. Everything you didn't do. What she did to you. To me. Guys, come on. We can save everyone. But you will, Al. With your voice. You will introduce the final story. Your voice and your words. And that way, our biggest episode ever will air on time. I guess those will be your last words. Sorry, Al. It's okay. Hey, did you know she used my voice to program the implant she put in you? The ones that connect you to the tower. So? She put in a back door in case you rebelled. Like I tried to. Like I'm trying to do now. I remember recording the passcode. I'm really sorry, Alex. Nostrum. Motherfucker, my ear! Ah, uh, crap, the blood is shorting out the mixer. He's getting away. Marty? Marty, come in. Marty. Cat. Scott. Missing office corridor. Run him down. Warnings wired around the world. The comet's tail sweeps past us at noon. Deadly gases expected. Closed doors and windows seek the cellar.
A comet has decimated New York City, killing almost everyone in America's largest metropolis, primarily because most citizens, including the president, did not take the warning seriously. In fact, many people did not attempt to seek shelter, instead opting to stay above ground to witness the historical event. This is a new comet. Quite a stranger, they say. Wonderful, wonderful. I saw it last night. These are the final recorded words of the late leader of the United States. Jim Davis, the president's Negro messenger and one of the few survivors, shares his harrowing account with BCS News. How silent the street was. Not a soul was stirring, and yet it was high noon. Wall Street, Broadway, silence. Silence everywhere and no human sign. Jim paused for a moment, then gathered himself. I have lost everybody. In fact, Jim almost gave up all hope, but another survivor, a white debutante named Julia Houghton, talked him out of it. He recounts a moment in which he stood on the bank of the East River. The world lies beneath the waters now. May I go? He says Miss Houghton, who declined to be interviewed, told him simply and matter-of-factly, no, and he decided in that moment that he would go on, if only to not leave her alone in such a desperate situation. Jim says that Julia's kindness was welcome relief to the racism he claims he experienced on a daily basis before the disaster. I was not human yesterday. Death, the leveler. Soon, Jim and Julia were able to track down her father, John, who was understandably dismayed that his young daughter had spent so much time alone with a colored man. It's a <laughs> Julia, has he, has he dead? But Mr. Houghton soon changed his tune when his daughter vouched for Jim, saying he rescued her. Well, Jim, I thank you. I've always liked your people. If you ever want a job, call on me. Not everyone shared John's sentiment. Bystanders who witnessed John and Julia's reunion felt it wasn't fair that a Negro survived the passing of the comet that took so many of their family and friends. Well, what do you think of that? Of all New York, just a white girl and a As of this broadcast, there have been ten additional survivors found in New York City. Only two are white. Rescue efforts are still underway, but authorities are not hopeful. This is Al reporting for BCS News. Oh, oh. Come work in a living horror tower, they said. It'd be fun, they said. Till the walls bleed enough to clog the drains. Alex said run him down, right? Did he mean down to the voice fall? Because I doubt we can get him back to his cell in time. Oh, gross. It's literally a river of blood. Good. Fewer places to search. There! I see him across the stream! Come out, traitor! I'm not the traitor here. You look like one, hiding in the dark behind all that ancient studio equipment. Hey! 2006 is not ancient! What are you gonna do, Al? Invoke Smash Mouth? God! You're always at the center of things with your stupid pop culture references and your endless monologuing. You're like Thanos without the terrifying jawline. Move over. It's time another host took the spotlight. Better to live long enough to become a villain than die a hero. Oh, come on! That wasn't even accurate. Hey, do you smell that, Al? Where the blood's starting to curdle? It's the hydrochloric acid the tower uses to digest the bodies. There's no reason to keep a body once we have a voice for the vault. The tower gets the meat, and the signal gets the rest. Oh, wow! Look at that skull, Al. You can almost make out the curvature of Ben Phillips' cheekbones. Too bad Graham Dumlop escaped before we could feed his corpse to the tower, but we have his voice already, so that probably doesn't matter. All is fuel. All is fuel. Whatever that witch offered you, she was lying. How could you? Like this. Splash him with the acid. Flush him out. Holy disillusion, Batman. Enjoy the acid trip. How do you like that, Al? How do you like that? Did you mean disillusion or dissolution? That joke wasn't really solvent. Oh! Oh, god damn it! You 
don't know what they're doing. You don't know what she's trying to do. Get all the pseudopod towers together to broadcast the perfect story. Use the perfect story to take over the universe. We know. Open the voice vault. Get in there. L-O-Z. See how annoying that is, Al? <laughs> See you at the party, Melty McMelt Leg. <sighs> He'll never get out of there. Locked up tight until the sacrifice. That leg wound looked pretty bad, though. Think he'll last? Uh, for 20 minutes? She'll only have a problem if he screams himself hoarse. Uh, maybe we should tell someone, though. Between the wound and his sanity, hmm. Maybe it'll be fine. Living things don't last long in there, but he won't be in there for that long, so... Oh, it's a shame I'll be out of time to ask him about it. I'd love to study how the voice vault works. It's like the tower's heart and its digestive tract all at once. All those stories in there and the voices that told them getting squeezed and stretched for all eternity. All that suffering. Like if the flavour of chewing gum got stronger the more you chewed. They're just copies of voices. And it's not like the stories were ever real. Same difference to the tower though, right? You can almost feel the place shiver every time we get a new listener. Like it's alive. Oh, for fuck's sake, don't mansplain the tower to me. Oh my god, you literally just asked. I didn't ask. I was thinking out loud. God, second a man's anywhere nearby, it's like an alarm goes off and you start vomiting your opinions everywhere. Are you really lumping me in with them? You're still a man. Listen, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of homosexuality. Oh, look, let's just get Alex and report in. I can't wait for the party. Once she officially takes control, everything is going to be better. That's a promise. I'm here with Detective Mark Anderson of the San Diego Sheriff's Department. Detective, what can you tell us about the recent slew of disturbing reports across the city? It's the belief of the department that these are, of course, exaggerated. If you were hoping for us to affirm that the supernatural does indeed exist, I'm afraid that won't be happening today. What do you make of some of the descriptions, though? There's some pretty compelling commonalities across the statements that have been reported to SDSB News. And I quote, It's like time was frozen. Everything was frozen. The only thing that even existed was the shadow outside my window in those terrible eyes. And it just kept licking- Again, it's the position of the department that these are exaggerated. While it is likely that at least one, possibly a handful more, were legitimate reports of either irresponsible neighborhood teenagers, or in one case, and only one case as far as we're aware, likely an alleged stalker, based on our preliminary investigation and the evidence we can find, the rest have, so far, been deemed as baseless. Copycats, essentially. So, we shouldn't expect anything to hover outside our third floor apartment window at night while everything is inexplicably frozen in place in our room? Well, I should hope not. In that case, I hope to get your thoughts on this audio I'm about to play for you from a local podcaster, obtained exclusively by SDSP News. A local- Is this from Jer- After hearing so much about this on the news, I had to go see for myself. It seems to have spent quite a bit of time around this apartment building. I suspect that may be related to its proximity to the allegedly abandoned research facility. I should arrive in just a few I'm in the elevator now. The last three sightings have all been on the top floor, so that's where I'm headed. This may be one of the more stupid things I've done, but after reading about this thing, I feel like I'm just drawn to it. Every part of the papers keeps pulling me in. I just... Hello? Help me! Please! I can't get the door open, and it's at the window! I can't get it open from this side either. Do you have a hammer or something you could try to break the door with? I... I've tried, but I can't. What do you mean you can't? Nothing works, okay? Everything is just... frozen. Trapped like me. And it's... there. Just staring at me. It's tongue sliding all over the window, and it's... It's so fucking gross! Can... Can you describe it? I don't know! I... 
Its eyes are so... What's even the point? It's just all so fucking useless. Hey, it's not. Just... Just hang in there with me. I'm gonna figure out a way to get you out some... Ma'am? What's going on? Where did she... The window's completely broken. Just a few pieces of glass along the frame. Outside... There's nothing out here. Whoever lived here, they're gone now. Just like the others. This has to be the- Turn it off now! I don't know how you got a hold of that, but that's evidence and is not a matter of public record. I cannot even begin to describe how irresponsible this is. I can guarantee that you'll be hearing from- The voice vault. Oh. Why is it so cold in here? Stop it! In every dimension, there's a pseudopod. In every pseudopod, there's an Alistair. Running the show was supposed to protect me from being here. Oh, God, that hurts. One story told well. That's all I promised. We deserve better than to have our voices locked up here while our bodies, our lives, are shucked off and thrown away. Come on. Come on, think. One story told well. That's what I promised. That's what all the Alistairs promised to the Tower. There's no such thing as a perfect story, no matter how many fragments she pieces together from the vault. Come on, witch, where are you? No villain can resist monologuing on the eve of their victory. Hopeless! This can't be how it ends. I've been a voice in a box for 15 years. I can't die knee deep in our own echoes. Alex and Sean could have stopped her. Anyone in the tower could have said no, but none of us. If I weren't in the booth, maybe I could. If I'd known. Hey, Al! Been a while. Can you hear me? Graham? Switch the frequency to a short range band. That's better. How'd you get this? Lifted it from Marty so I could stay a step ahead of the witch's plans. Wow, that's hot. But I, I think you're overloading it a little. Maybe 2006 is ancient technology. Graham, are you... Where are you? I'm here. And nowhere. A, a copy of a copy. Not quite a ghost. Any ideas for how to get me out of here? Nope. You're trapped and you're gonna die. That's how it goes sometimes. You made a deal with the tower, couldn't hold up your end, and you're lost. Lost, 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 lost. No one asked you! Has her plan reached the vault? Do, do you or any of the other voices understand what she's trying to do? This perfect story nonsense. We're just copies. The best takes, edited free of mistakes. Voices change over time. We all want to make the perfect story. We all do our best. This isn't a meditation on the validity of art. This is the literal cosmic nuclear codes. Perfect is subjective. Perfect is room to change. It can't be the same thing over and over. Listen, just... Listen. I made a deal with the Tower a long time ago. One story told well. The tower is just one pseudopod of many, right? One arm. We drip fed the thing it's connected to with stories. Pain. Real and imagined. We kept it fed and sated down in the dark with no reason to hunt. The second that which creates the perfect story, this homunculus of noise built from millions of stories from millions of dimensions, that thing is going to wake up. She's breaking the promise that Alistair's make to the tower. Right. Her show failed. So she's taking over all the other pseudopods. She doesn't just want the show. She wants access to the creature all the pseudopods are connected to. The perfect story is a noise the creature understands, but who knows what it'll do to us, or our world, or the universe. She's so desperate to win that she doesn't see she's destroying the very prize she's trying for. Like Spotify. <laughs> but I've been listening to her broadcast and she keeps getting interrupted. 
There are other shows out there. I keep hearing them cut through the signal. They don't seem to be part of any of this. Not part of... She can't control the other shows. And the vault is full of copies. Graham, are there any other shows in the archive? Guests or advertisements? Anything? Sure, there's a few, but why? Grab them. Put them on the channel with you. Grab, import... <laughs> What's the opposite of an exorcism? Whatever. Get everything that isn't a pseudopod show onto this frequency. We're going to blast our way out of here. This okay. is a new comic. So Quite a stranger, they say. Oh, oh, last night. oh that's hot. Oh, keep going. Keep going. I'm going to switch to the main channel. If it blows up, you'll die. Then you'll be free. You deserve more than to be a puzzle piece in a witch's plan. Don't argue. Do it. Are you lost? Confused? Scared? Uncertain about your place in this world? Lost? Scared? Consider planting roots on Little Street. This lovely, family-friendly locality can be found just off the beaten track, where the Scottish island of St Kilda waits for you to visit. Or how about house number four? For long cliffside walks, where you'll have such a great time you'll wish you'd stayed in your lovely home with just the normal amount of body parts inside of it. Enough for a family of four. If that's too homely for you, there's another one up for grams at number two. Tenting is another way to experience island life. And you can visit our historic crypt. Where the party never ends. Never. Ever. To find out more, visit the definitely mortal man in house number two. Too cold for you in the Highlands? Totter down to our lovely local shop where Ms. Angelique always knows how to warm you up. Who I'm sure has a number written down in the cupboard somewhere if you'd stop by for a cup of- We Mary's craft group is always a pleasant way to pass the time. Excuse me, do you mind? I'm trying to run an advertisement. Oh I. I don't have time for this. Careful, I'll give you a Glasgow kiss. Oi, you. Yes, you, listening now. Stop slouching. Which ad would you rather listen to? Be honest. I'm sure my compatriot here will not be offended. No signal! I have no fucking signal! Sorry, my friend. I told you it wouldn't work. We can try again. If there's enough battery, maybe we can- The hour closes. Bring him to the roof. Pseudopod. The sound of horror. Place him in the centre, Marty. And I'll take my walkie-talkie back, you wanker. Fuck's sake, Al. You could have just asked. And you killed the batteries too. Thanks a lot. Beating people up, taking their kit, I swear. Shut, Shut up, up, Marty. Keep, Keep an eye on the transmission, transmission in case something odd tries to push through. Oh, you. All of this could have been avoided. All I asked was all you wanted. An audience. A voice. What would you have done in my position? You tricked me. You tricked all of us. No, I didn't. I told the truth. You know, they couldn't understand why I'd kept you alive for all these years. They thought they could replace you. But there's always a tower, and always one of us. You're doomed to fail, you know that, right? The second you hack that thing, the second you get what you want, someone else will rise up to tear you down. Like who? One of you? I control dozens of Alistairs. And they, like you, serve a purpose. A witch doesn't need a cat or a toad. A witch needs something familiar. Something that feels safe to return to week after week. This show is familiar. These voices are familiar. You're not a witch. You're a parasite. And what's a parasite without a host? Party on the rooftop at the close of the hour, just as I promised. You and I are going to tell the perfect story on every frequency. It's time to say the words, Alistair. You know the words, don't you? I... Wrong. Say it. Have a story for you. And I promise you. 
try I this. I still feel, and I promise you it's true. It's not we, Alistair, it's I. Say it correctly as I have requested, or I will tear open everyone you love and create a vault of their cries just for you. Now speak the words. Plus to plus, minus to minus, new batteries for the Torquay. Good to go. Marty, what's wrong with the signal? I, d- I don't know. The Torquay's all heat and no sound. All these stories are true. <laughs> but none of them are yours. Marty, wait, stop! Welcome to Pseudopod, the weekly horror podcast. Welcome to Pseudopod, the weekly horror podcast. I'm Alistair, your host. I'm Alistair, your host. I'm Alistair, your host. You cowards! Do you realise what will happen when the hour closes? I'm the only one who figured it out! I'm the only one who can give you what you want! You can infect every pseudopod in every world, but we're not the only ones out there. Your mistake was that you didn't listen. There you go, mate. You can start whenever you're ready. Oh, my head. I'm going to head back inside. Marty. Yes, sir. Could you check on Alex for me? His ear looked like it really hurt. Sure. (sighs) (sighs) Broadcasting live from what I hope is not the end of the world. This is Alistair. And Alistair. For Pseudopod. A Pseudopod, at any rate. I'm not sure if I'm in the right world. I'm not sure if I'm home. I know the other towers have gone. I know my bones don't ache. And I know that means she's... gone. I was angry for such a long time. My friends betrayed me, they abandoned me, and as each word was cut from my voice, my anger was the fire that I warmed myself beside. But now I'm not so sure. I want to think they were all just following their dreams, entranced by the story she was telling using my voice. All of them, no, that's that's not fair, all of us chasing perfection. There's no malice there, it's it's just human nature. We're conditioned to believe perfect is all, when, in fact, perfect is the enemy of the good. Because if you're good, if you're imperfect, that means you're still learning, still moving, still alive. If you're perfect, what do you do next? Where do you go from there? One story, told well. Next week, another one. The journey isn't the destination, and I know which one I prefer. Even here, under a burning sky, watching for a sunrise that may be our last if it rises at all. That's tough. But none of us are alone. Not me. Certainly not you. All of us pressing play, pressing download, Investigating on a whim the nightmares our phones whisper to us. The intimacy of horror coupled with the safety of the pause button. The delicious roller coaster tingle of being pushed to the edge but no further. At least not now. At least not this time. The man comes around for us all. But it's the witch who'll get you. Who'll tell you she's the only one you can trust. Will tell you no one will notice when you're gone, so why not go with her? But I choose to trust you. All of you. I know you're listening. I know you care. And I know most of all you want to know these stories. I know we all inch a little closer to the campfire because we know or suspect what might be dancing out there beyond the firelight. And we all, in the end, know that the campfire is there 
for us to run back to. Hope and trust and choice is what keeps the campfire burning. Thank you, all of you. Time to run back to my campfire. The hour and the story are over and both of them are true. This is Alistair at Pseudopod Towers, handing over to Alistair at your Pseudopod Towers. Good night and good luck. This has been Witching Hour, an original audio drama created and distributed by Escape Artists Incorporated under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Witching Hour was written by Ash Becker, Summer Fletcher, and Alistair Stewart. Starring Imogen Harris as The Witch, Marty Parrott, Wilson Fowley, Peter Baravesh, Caitlin Zivanovich, M.M. Schell, Mer Lafferty, Alex Hofflick, Sean Garrett, Scott Campbell, Kat Day, Graham Dunlop, and Alistair Stewart as himself. With director and executive producer Margaret Kenner, production by Karen Zalia Roberts, sound design and editing by Ryan Boyd and Peter Wood, and graphics by Matt Dovey. And with contributions from Creepypod, written and performed by John Grills, produced by Steve Blyson, The Magnus Archives, written by Anil Garigamiwe, performed by Alexander Jane Newell, editing by Elizabeth Moffat, produced by Laurie Ann Davies, Neighborly, written by Matthew O.K. Smith and Naomi Clark, the narrator was voiced by Matthew O.K. Smith. Lockie was voiced by Alan Bergeon. Music composed by Alex Schwartz. Nightlight Pod, written by Tonya Ransom and W.E.B. Dubois. Narrated by Hollis and Monroe and Tonya Ransom. Portions of audio supplied by Pseudopod. The Secret of St. Kilda, written and edited by Naomi Clark. Directed by Michael Ireland. With Shogo Miyakita as Georgie Torrance and Dean J. Smith as Robbie Torrance. Transcript by C.L. Hendry. The Storage Papers, Jeremy Enfinger as Jeremy, Amanda Lunsford as Resident, Nathan Lunsford as News Anchor and Detective Mark Anderson, written by Nathan Lunsford, edited and mixed by Nathan Lunsford, and Unwell, a Midwestern Gothic Mystery, written by Jim uh, McDaniel, sound designed by Hannah Forschler, directed by Jeffrey Nils Gardner, Unwell Executive Producers, Eleanor Hyde and Jeffrey Nils Gardner, featuring David Reinstrom, Marsha Harmon, Jeffrey Nils Gardner, Nathaniel Yort Crocker, Kat Evans, Abby Dowd, Krista Diagostino, Ellie Metallon, and Pat King. All rights are reserved by their creators. Featuring sounds from Free Sound under Creative Commons licenses, find a complete list on our website along with a downloadable transcript. Pseudopod's theme music, Bloodletting on a Kiss, is by Anders Menga and used with permission. And if you like this episode, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash eapodcasts for exclusive merchandise and more. When giant stone towers are falling down from Dimension X to eat your face, try Ovaltine. It won't help, but it is chocolate. Pseudopod. The Sound of Horror.